a young man was brought to the emergency department after being hit by a sharp object on the radial side of the back of the wrist region. Examination reveals torn tendons in the first dorsal compartment of the wrist. Which of the following is the most likely injured tendons? Now answering this question requires knowledge about the extensor retinaculum. The extensor retinaculum is a thickening of the deep fascia of the forearm that lies obliquely across the extensor surface of the wrist joint. Proximally, it's attached to the radius, proximal to the styloid process. Distally, it's attached to the pisiform and triketral bones. It holds the tendons of extensor muscles in place. From the deep surface of the retinaculum, fibrous septa pass into the bones of the forearm, dividing the extensor tunnel into six compartments. The lateral one covers the lateral surface of the distal end of the radius. This tunnel allows the passage of abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis, the two muscles forming the anterior boundary of the anatomical snub box. The posterior surface of the radius at its distal end is characterized by the presence of a prominent dorsal tubercle of Lister. This tubercle can be palpated around the middle of the dorsal aspect of the radius. The prominence is small, hence the name tubercle, in contrast to the bigger tuberosity at the proximal end of the bone, with which the name should not be confused. A broad groove lies lateral to the dorsal tubercle, forming a second compartment, which lodges the flat tendons of extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. These tendons are in their way to be inserted into the bases of the second and third metacarpal bones, respectively. On the ulnar side of the dorsal tubercle is a narrow groove, which lodges the tendon of extensor pollicis longus. The dorsal tubercle acts as a pulley for this tendon, as it changes its direction, forming the posterior boundary of the anatomical snub box. Between the narrow groove for the tendon of extensor pollicis longus and the ulnar border of the radius is a shallow depression for the tendons of extensor digitorum and the deeper lying extensor indices. Over the radio ulnar joint passes extensor digiti minimi in compartment 5. Lastly, in compartment 6, the most medial groove near the ulnar styloid process transmits extensor carpi ulnaris. Returning to the options, extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, they pass in the second compartment. Regarding option B, brachioradialis does not extend deep to the extensor retinaculum. It is attached at the base of the radial styloid process proximal to the extensor retinaculum and does not occupy any compartment deep to the extensor retinaculum. Extensor digitorum and extensor indices are located in the fourth compartment, more medially. Extensor carpi ulnaris and extensor digiti minimi, they do not share a single compartment. Extensor carpi ulnaris is located in the sixth compartment, and extensor digiti minimi in the fifth compartment, dorsal to the radio ulnar joint. Option E is the correct option. Abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis pass in the first compartment, most laterally forming the anterior border of the anatomical snuff box.